Okay, in this video we're going to talk about adding uh, custom corners to the die or maybe even a panel. Uh, we'll start out with a die here. So I'll start with the shape builder. And I'm going to go with an oval top to begin with. And I'll change this to 24 inches by 24 inches on a 36 inch base. So what I want to do is I want to actually um, give this a Scotia on the top. So I would come up to Windows, and, sorry, Window Dockers, and this Filet Chamfer Scallop Filet Scallop Chamfer Docker. It's hard to say. If I select that, it'll pop up. Um, if it pops up along the bottom here, I, I actually only prefer to have the tray on the bottom but sometimes since I have the tray, it pops up new dockers down there. So if you grab the tab, click on it and drag it off, uh, you'll see that's the docker and we can just drag it right over here to the right. And as soon as we get it to the edge, you'll see it snaps kind of gray. That means it's gonna snap in line with the rest of those dockers. So we'll just snap it over there and then we'll minimize our tray again. Okay, so this docker will allow us to take our shape tool and select these two nodes here. I don't want to select this node because I don't want to change that one. So we're just going to select these two nodes and scallop them, which would give us the, the Scotia that we're wanting. You can change your radius, let's say three inches. Um, it's kind of hard to see uh, this way, but it's actually giving a um, a preview of what it's going to look like here. Um, <clears throat> so as we as we change that number, it's going to change that preview. Um, but because of the the color over the uh, the gray, you can't really see it very well. However, so in this case, we're going to do a two inch scallop and hit apply. One of the things with uh, 2017, if I come up to Tools, Customization, Appearance, uh, no, it's under Nodes and Handles. I like to use Legacy uh, just because I think it's faster, but if you do Default, then it changes the way that the lines are. So I'm going to actually back up here just a little bit. And now that I've reselected that, now I'll change my number. You'll see our, my line there is now a different color. It's a little bit more easy to see than the color that we had before. Um, but anyway, not it's not too no noticeable. Anyway, two inches is what I wanted anyway, so I don't really need to see a preview. I'm just going to hit apply. And now you can see there's giving it a preview of what it would look like if I reapplied it because now we've got three nodes selected on either side. Um, so we don't really want to do that. But now we've got our piece. With stones, however, um, you're not typically going to curve back along that edge, and that's because we've got our oval top, and so it doesn't quite uh, work out exactly the way we want. So one thing that I would probably do is I would uh, either move this over a little bit and then re-straighten it, or I would just add another node here so let's just say I add a node here. And I'm double clicking on my line to add a node. I'm going to double click down here to add a node as well. And this one I can just click and delete. Now these nodes, since I added those, um, I want to make sure that they are cusps. Otherwise, when I turn this to a line, it would uh, change the curve here on the end. So I'm clicking on my line and you can right click and say to line or you can come up here and say to line or you can just hit one on the keyboard. I prefer to use the keyboard shortcut of one. But that way this is going to be uh, a little bit more straight up and down. And if I wanted to I could then delete this node and it would uh, curve that a little better even. So I'll do the same thing over here on, on this side. I'm going to zoom in and I'm using my mouse wheel to zoom in. but. I'll double click here, double click here, make sure that those are cusps. I usually use the keyboard shortcut of C on the keyboard when I'm doing that. As soon as I make my node, I just hit C on the keyboard and that turns it into a cusp, but just to show you otherwise. 
And then I will hit one on my keyboard to turn that into a line and then go ahead and delete this so that it's nice and smooth. So that's how I would uh, go about creating a Scotia on a, a top of a die. You can also, if you were to draw a rectangle, the rectangle tool itself has these options for round, scalloped, and uh, chamfered corners. Um, so you can actually click on your nodes, whichever ones you want. Let's say we wanted to do all of them and just type in one here. If it's locked, it'll do all of them at the same time. So I can just hit enter and it'll do all of them at the same time. Or if you want to, you can select with your shape tool only individual corners. So if I wanted to do that one, holding down shift, I'll select this one, change it to scallop. Sorry. Do that again. So I've got scallop now, and then I can change my numbers here. Let's say two inches. That's going to do all of them because I had it locked. So I don't want to do that. I just want to do two inches there, two inches there. And I don't actually have to have uh, those nodes selected because I'm doing the corners. So if I just typed in one inch here and one inch here, it'll do it for me. So I guess I didn't have to have those selected. Anyway, okay, so that's how you would do it if you have a rectangle, but that only works with rectangles because they're special shapes that allow that. If it had been converted to curves, uh, those options no longer exist on the property bar. So that's when you have to come over here to the docker and, and use it that way. But that's how we can uh, fillet, scallop, and chamfer um, easily using the, the docker there.